Hello and welcome back to another Minecraft Let's Play video by me, Foxy Hotel, here on the Truly Bedrock Survival Server. And today, we're going to be doing some more farmy things and hopefully some buildy things as well. Let's head over and check out what we did in the last episode. So in the last episode, we made a bit of a mess with some flower farms that ended up working out okay, although they're a little bit laggy when the server was busy. However... We got them working and we got a lot of flowers and we also made some two tall flower farms that give us eight different types of dye. So these are the eight different types of flowers we get from those and those are the eight different colors. So we've got red, pink, yellow, magenta, light blue, blue, light gray I believe that is and orange. We've also got white coming in from our bone farms and we've got black coming in from our squid farm but that's not here. We can also get green coming in from our cactus farm but we need to smelt that so we're going to have to add a smelting system into there at some point and that pretty much is all of the dyes except for light green and brown which we're going to look at today so first we need to consider how we're going to get both those colors of dye and for lime dye that involves farming sea pickles which is quite easily done by putting sea pickles on coral blocks underwater and then bone mealing them and then that works very similarly to how our flower farm worked now, there are a lot of different types of sea pickle farms. This is one I made a long time ago, and it still works pretty well. If we turn this thing on by flicking that lever there, you'll see that the sea pickles get bone mealed from the top. They grow on the coral blocks below. The pistons break them, and then this hopper minecart underneath collects them, and they go in this chest. And we use this on Truly Bedrock Season Zero. Right down here at the bottom of the world in my lab, and you can see behind me, we've got exactly the same thing going on here. The pickles getting bone milled from above, the pistons kicking out, and underneath we've got a hopper minecart, which is picking them up and putting them in this chest. Even everything down to this redstone torch and the lever to activate it. However, due to the way that water changed in one of the updates, I think it was 1.13, items started floating and they didn't all get picked up. So cut now to Truly Bedrock Season 1, where I improved on this. What I did in order to fix it is bring everything to the same level so that when the sea pickles spread, they aren't going to float up before they get caught by the hopper minecart below. However, you can see from this, there is a bit of a problem. Before, the pistons, even though they are waterlogged, used to carry the water with them when they extended, which means the sea pickles could grow. But as you can see from this, the water is not going anywhere. It is completely stuck, which I think means that we're going to need a redesign. So using what we learned in the last video about pistons and shifting floors and things like that, I have been able to come up with this design, which is quite interesting and works quite well. So let me talk you through it. What we've got is a platform of three by three corals with the pickles on the inside with a dropper or a dispenser above them with bone meal in. Underneath that, we have pistons on each side, but they're not shifting the floor. They're actually pulling the blocks away. Each one of these is a sticky piston and it's attached to that block. And you can see around the edges, we've actually waterlogged all of the areas around that. So as those pistons retract like that one there, they will pull the blocks away, but they're not able to die because they're still next to water. So then what we've got underneath is a waterlogged hopper minecart, and it needs to be waterlogged because when the pistons retract, obviously the water is going to go through. So that being waterlogged means the rails are not going to wash away. And then we've just got a simple clock. So when I flick this lever here, we've got an observer clock, which is going to set that off, which as you can see, retracts and pushes the pistons in and out whilst bone meal in the sea pickles, which means we get an absolutely ridiculous number of sea pickles and some popping through here as well, which isn't ideal. Maybe we could uh, shift the redstone around a little bit like that to maybe prevent those popping out there. But yeah, that's absolutely great. And we're getting absolutely loads of them in our chest below. So I think we got a winner for building this on Truly Bedrock. Before we get building that, however, let's have a look at cocoa bean farming. And there are two basic ways we can do this. We could have an absolutely huge wall full of cocoa beans that are growing naturally and then either shift that wall with pistons or something or use water to break them all off, which would give us a lot of return. But then we'd have to spend ages replanting them all. Alternatively, we can use yet another bone meal farm and a relatively smaller one at that to give us quite a lot of cocoa beans in return in a short space of time. If I press that button, 
the cocoa beans will drop off, I can replant them, and then I can use the bone meal to grow them. And we can pretty much fully automate this using the player when they're AFK. It takes one cocoa bean and two bone meals to grow it, and then all we gotta do is move the piston at the right time, and we've got a farm. Going back in time again to a world I haven't been to in a very long time. You will see in my underground area we have a whole bunch of farms that were built a very, very long time ago. But one of them still works very nicely and that is my cocoa bean farm which is in here. And this is it. It consists of a dropper which gives you cocoa beans. It consists of a jungle log, a couple of dispensers and just the player. And what you do is you grab yourself a cocoa bean from somewhere, you turn the system on, and you will see that it's all timed perfectly to work nicely, and you just sit and hold right click to place the cocoa beans, and you're given extra cocoa beans as you stood here from the dispenser behind you, and then you're just placing them so you never run out of cocoa beans, and all the time you're doing this, these are getting collected and harvested, and they're going into the chests, which is absolutely fantastic. So if we turn that off, and have a look in the chest, you'll see there aren't all that many in there because they're actually all managing to find their way into this system here. But eventually as that backs up, you get them all and it's, it's a good system. And as much as that is a great design and works really well even now in the latest versions of Minecraft, I can't help coming back to my redstone testing world and creating something new and smaller and more efficient and more compact and faster that took me literally five seconds to do because this is basically my crop farm or my micro crop farm but with one less dispenser in a more compact area so if i can grab myself a cocoa bean let's check this thing out where's my cocoa beans mate for the sake of demonstrating i'm going to go into survival with this and you will have to forgive me when we activate the farm things might go a little bit herky-jerky as we stand in there because of the piston but what we do is turn it on which is going to create an observer clock I know I'm using observers a lot lately. I probably shouldn't because they're not very reliable. And that's creating a clock, which is making our piston go up and down with our uh, cocoa jungle wood on it. And we've got two dispensers either side with bone meal in, which are being fed from this chest here. All we do then is stand on this hopper and right click against that. And there we go. There's the herky jerky of us being pushed backwards and forwards by that as it grows. But we're now catching all of the cocoa beans in our inventory and what we don't catch will go into that hopper below. Now, there is a chance as we do this, as our inventory fills up, that, well, providing you want more than an inventory is full of cocoa beans, let's say that was the case, that it might end up spilling over the edges. So if we could put a bit of glass there and a bit of glass there, that's going to stop that from happening. We could even put one there to stop it going on top of there. And now again, all we got to do is just stand there and hold down the right click button and then you know if we've got an auto clicker or something we can just go away have a cup of tea come back and we'll have absolutely tons and tons of cocoa beans so there we go that's what we're going to build on truly bedrock however before we get into building this we need to build the sea pickle farm so I've started with a raised platform of hoppers going into some chests and the reason I've done it floating in the air is because we're going to need to split the output of this farm into two ways. We're going to want some of the sea pickles coming through a furnace system and being turned into lime dye which will make our way into the storage system and the other sea pickles themselves also want to go into our storage system without being smelted. So by having a little bit of room underneath we've got room to create those systems. Next we do a ring of glass around the side of our main hoppers and then we put water in there to completely waterlog that section so that when we put the minecart rails in they're not going to wash away. We've got a redstone block at the back there which is going to go next to our powered rail like that and then we've just literally got the rails going around the bottom all the way around. Oh jeez, oh jeez, why do I bother? Like that, jeez. Then we can put in the minecart hopper, however it is slightly concerning me how slowly that is going. So what I'm going to do is actually replace a couple of these glass blocks here with the redstone blocks and we're going to have a couple more powered rails on there because yeah, look, that's just about stopped, jeez. Yeah, that's, not, that's not very good at all. There we go. That should keep it going around nice and quickly and we shouldn't have to worry about that stopping for no particular reason while we're running this thing. Now I'm using mainly glass as the building material in this build. It's absolutely unnecessary. You don't need to use glass at all. You can use whatever blocks you want. I just like to be able to see inside my farms when they're running so that I can, you know, see if there's any problems and things like that. 
So next was the sticky pistons, and now what we're going to do is create the spaces where we're going to waterlog between those so that the coral blocks don't dry out. Then we're literally just going to fill up this entire area here full of water, and then we'll be able to place our coral blocks. Like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the one in the middle. Yeah, we should probably uh, get some water around that. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'm not messing it up again. Need more water, mate. So when you do this, try not to be a blithering idiot like me and try not to get water where it didn't want to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to then place water there and that, then I can put the middle one in like that with the sea pickle on and then I should be okay to put these ones in here. They should now be touching water and they shouldn't die. He says pensively. That looks good. Ow. Now we need some solid blocks over these pistons to transfer the redstone signal through into those when they get activated. And we need the dispenser in place above the sea pickle, which is quite hard to add in. However, for a wily fox like me that likes being underwater, I can just pop it in there like that. It wasn't difficult to place at all. Don't know what I was talking about. And then it's just literally a case of filling glass in everywhere else to stop the sea pickles from bouncing out while they're in there and then linking up the redstone. Now it was getting a little bit dark over here so I've replaced a few of the bits of glass with sea lanterns so that we can see what's going on and keep it nice and bright and spawn proof. And now that is all of the glass in place around that area there. So it's just time for the redstone. So there is our bone meal chest at the top. Now that is quite difficult to get to, I will be honest with you. We're going to have to have either a ladder or some scaffolding at this thing permanently so that we can reach our bone meal chest. But that's absolutely fine. And then we just need a load of redstone dust and our clock system. And we're just going to link up all of the pistons together like this. That's those all linked up. And if we put a block there with a redstone torch on it, that's going to activate all of those pistons and push them all into the middle. And if we replace that block with a solid block and put the redstone up there, that will activate our dispenser. And now we have our observer clock in place, which we can then send through the system like that to activate it all. Although that's kind of making weird things happen with the timings because of the redstone torches. And also you might have noticed there that we've forgotten the key ingredient here, which is more water. We actually need more water just there and also on this side as well to keep those middle pistons from drying out, which means now I've got to replace some coral and i've completely run out of yellow so we're gonna have a higgledy piggledy coral oh jeez and we also need to add water sources into this top layer here to stop the entire thing from being flowing water because i don't think the pickles will grow in flowing water at least they didn't used to when they first introduced pickles to the game they would grow in flowing water which made the farms really easy to produce and then they stopped that from being able to happen i don't know if that's been reverted again or not anyway our system is now 100 percent done I'm not overly keen on this redstone lamp timing system, but it'll do for now. We just need to get some bone meal in it. And I have just noticed another fundamental flaw with the design now that I've moved the hopper above the dispenser rather than next to it there. And that is that this redstone is locking it, preventing the items from going into the dispenser. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove that redstone there and I'm going to put an observer in looking towards that so that that will be activated when the redstone line flashes, but it's not going to be permanently activated, which means our bone meal can get into the system. And if we flick this lever, we can check this thing out. Hopefully the bone meal will actually be growing the pickles it is. I can see those growing. I can see them bouncing about and getting stuck in places that they're, they shouldn't be stuck. And I can see massive lag spikes as well. Yes, this is definitely truly bedrock in my industrial area. Very, very laggy when we got things running. But that seems to be working pretty good. And it's not as laggy as I thought it would be, to be honest with you. So there we go. We now have a fully functioning, fully automated, bone meal powered sea pickle farm, which does need an output system in order for us to turn some of those into lime dye. But we'll worry about that a little bit later on. So building the cocoa bean farm is going to be a little bit trickier on Truly Bedrock because I actually wanted dispensing the cocoa beans into our water stream like our two tall flower farms do, which means I need to add some extra redstone that I haven't actually figured out how to do yet. So that's going to come a little bit later on. 
But basically, we, what we've got is our hopper pointing into another hopper, which points into that dispenser. We've got two dispensers on top of two solid blocks and a sticky piston with a jungle log on top. Now what I'm going to do is have a repeater going into the back of each one of those solid blocks with a couple of pieces of redstone dust running from the backs of those like that. Then all we need is an observer facing away from that piston. Ideally, if we can get it positioned right. No, it wants to face down. Of course it does. Okay, let's pop one there and then pop... No. No, of course not. Why would it go where we want it? There we go. <laughs> we have to remove the repeater to get the right angle on that. So now we've got our observer facing the right way. And then we want another observer facing into that one with the sticky piston above it. So let's grab some temporary blocks and let's block up from there and there. Put our sticky piston facing down like that. And now all we need to do is pop a lever on the back of our sticky piston. And that's going to be our on and off system. We then want a solid block at the very back there. That's going to transfer our redstone signal through this observer, through that redstone line and into our dispensers. And then we want our hoppers going into our dispensers that's going to feed in the bone meal like that. Then we can put a couple of chests on those there like that. But we can put bone meal in. And if we want to link those together to make adding the bone meal a little bit easier, if we put a hopper into the back of each one of those chests there, and then one into that one that way. If we then put a double chest there, that's going to feed into both of those chests at the same time. And that's it for the main part. That's our cocoa bean farm done on that part. But that's not actually going to spit anything out into the water stream below. So if I was to demonstrate that, let's chuck some dirt into that hopper there. If we can actually hit it, that's going to then go inside that dispenser there like that. And now I'm stuck. And when we turn this thing on, it's not going to spit out. So we just need a little bit more redstone. I don't think it's going to be that difficult to do. Okay, so taking the side off this, what I'd really like to do is to basically be able to transfer the redstone signal through that piston into that redstone dust there. That would be the simplest way to do it because then that would activate the dispenser. But unfortunately, the redstone won't travel through the piston. If we was to remove that piston and put a solid block there instead, then that signal would transfer and you, you can see the items get popped out of the dispenser. But that's not going to work because we need our piston there underneath the log, obviously. So instead, what we're going to do is actually lower down our observers another block. So we're going to have that one facing that way there. And if we make life easy on ourselves here, we can actually just put that one facing there. Then we need to get rid of that one and just bring this piston down a block like that and stick a new lever on the back there. Now we need to move this solid block down a block like that. So now if we put the lever on top of that piston instead and put that down, we will now get a flashing signal at the back, which we can link up to our redstone how we had it before. And then we can put that block back there and the repeater back there into that dispenser. And now we've got a system that will flush itself as well. Excellent. Good. We can rebuild this, put it back together again. So now the system is primed with bone meal. We can give this a test. Let's turn it on. Let's stand there. And why is our piston not going up and down? Oh, we, 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 I may have made a slight boo-boo with the... Oh, jeez. Um, oh, I need some more redstone. Hang on. Works really well, mate. No, it doesn't. Shut up. Don't worry. All I need is a bit of redstone. Come on, there. No. no that doesn't work at all. Okay. Don't worry. All I need is a block there and a bit of redstone there. There we go. <laughs> oh, that's, that's sorted. Jeez. Now we can stand here and make sure this is actually going to work. There we go. It's a, it's not, the timing's a bit more. We, we occasionally get one. Let's just stand back so we can... Yeah. It's, I think it's working. I just don't think we can see it visually because I'm not really losing any of my inventory. Are we getting any... We are getting some spat out. Yeah, we're getting more back than we're putting in, which is good news. And if we look in the water, we are getting some beans spat out. So it is working. Just graphically, it's not showing us the full growth. And I think that's probably just due to the lag in the, the area. Oh, dear. We've, we've, mm, we've, we've made it. Oh, jeez. 
This, yeah, I, I need to revisit the redstone on this. Let's just check that this is all going nicely inside our system, though it is. Look, look at all those cocoa beans going around there. So now what we need to do is find an empty one of these and take out the buttons and put the cocoa beans in instead. There we go. So now we will have cocoa beans coming into our system and we need to put on the item frames. Cocoa beans, there we go. And hopefully very soon we'll see them coming through into this sugar box. And there we go, with a little bit more jiggery-pokery of the redstone, we now have a system that's working. I've just run another repeater into the side of the piston instead of going through that way, which works absolutely fine. When we turn it on, you'll see everything behaves as normal. And if we stand here and we do what we need to do, we will now get the cocoa beans returning into our inventory. Jeez, it's oh, vicious. It's very vicious. And now I no longer get bounced about by as I put the stuff in because what I've done is replaced the glass block behind me with a fence post. So I'm half a block back, which means I'll still pick up the items, which is absolutely great. But I'm not getting chucked about like a ragdoll as I'm trying to use this farm. And there we go. After just a couple of minutes, you can see we've already got quite a bunch of cocoa beans coming through into the system, which is absolutely fantastic. Now what I need to do is sort out the distribution system on this. So we've got loads of seed pickles in that chest. We now want to be able to split half of those into a furnace system and half of them just into the storage system as they are. So we're going to need to get technical. And so I have come up with this, and I haven't tested it yet, but I'm fairly confident it's going to work. Basically, what I've done is I've taken the entire output to one double chest, which has a hopper going underneath, which is pointing into the side of a minecart hopper, which is also sucking from that chest. The idea is we want as much stuff to get into that hopper as possible so that it can then go round this track and distribute the items into these furnaces here. The hopper underneath that one will also take items out of it, which will filter through into this dispenser system here. So, for instance, if I was to put some hoppers in that chest there, we would get some in the minecart hopper and some being spat out down there, as you can see. So that should work. Now, the other system we've got in place here is the furnace system. So we've got a furnace minecart at the back here, which is distributing these scaffoldings between all of the furnaces and they should be being relatively evenly distributed they're all full now which is good so we can turn that off for a minute and then if we turn this on we should see all of those furnaces get lit there we go and the items should then end up in these dispensers once they're smelted and they will then get pushed out into the water stream as lime dye with a bit of luck there we go we got lime dye now going into the system so, if I turn this system on, that should all now be fully automated. And we can keep our eye on that hopper minecart there and just make sure it's actually going to get enough items. It looks like it's only getting one at a time at the minute, which is probably not ideal. Let's turn that off and let it fill up. And let's just go and sort out the storage system. So, I've already put in place uh, a position for the sea pickles, which should be coming through now. Now, what we need is a place for the lime dye as well, which should also be making its way around there it is look so the lime die will go into that slot there so i can put those on there and we should start seeing those coming through into the hopper any minute now let's go make sure this is all going to work it certainly seems to be doing the job we are getting sea pickles coming through here and we are getting plenty of sea pickles inside the furnaces as well which is obviously sending some through so we're not going to get millions and millions of the lime dye, but we're going to get enough. And they're coming all the way around here. They've got a long way to go, these dyes. But yeah, that system is now 100% working as intended, which is absolutely great. And after a little bit more jiggery-pokery, I've now managed to make it so that we are getting some items going into this chest because what was happening is they were all getting sucked through the system and most of them were going down there and not much in the furnaces at all. Now we're getting the furnaces actually backing up, which is what we want to see. And this chest is filling up nicely and this hopper is as well. So there's plenty of stuff going into that minecart hopper as it comes past. It needs to get at least six items inside it as it comes past this chest in order to be able to fill up all of these furnaces. Otherwise, it's never going to reach this last one here. But as you can see, it is doing nicely. That one's actually got a full load in there. So that's absolutely great. This system's working really, really nicely. So let's go and see 
how many sea pickles we got in our sea pickle box and how many dyes we've got in there as well. Lots and lots of sea pickles and quite a lot of dye already. This is great. When I started recording today's video, I never intended to spend all the time over at the industrial area. I didn't expect to be doing two full tutorial type videos on the two different types of dye farm we did today. I did intend to come over here and start making some progress on this beach, but I haven't. And time has gone on and I've edited the video and now we seem to be substantially behind in terms of coming over here and making work on the beach. And I want to ask you guys a quick question before we go. Do you like these videos where I do farms and we do it kind of in a tutorial style and I talk you through it? Or would you rather I just showed you them briefly in the test world and then cut to me having made them here so we can get on with other projects as well? Because I, it's really important that I do what you guys enjoy watching. Now, I know there'll be different opinions. I know some people will prefer me to do farm videos while other people would prefer me to do building. I know other people prefer me to do just storyline stuff and other people prefer, prefer me to do collabs with Slack. Now, I intend to do all of those different types of things over the next few weeks and months on Trudy Bedrock. But right now, I've got quite a few good ideas for some farms and I just want to know do you like it when they're all about farms, these videos, or would you prefer me to just cut through the farms as quickly as possible and get back to doing something else? Anyway, I've rambled on long enough today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do leave a like. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!